I am Slick Nick, your personal keto bro. And no, I am not a doctor, a nutritionist, even a trainer, nothing professional, just some random guy on YouTube who has recently turned 40 a month ago. I've reached my first phase of my fitness goals, which is to get rid of the dad bod. And now, once you, once you are in this phase, what you find is you have to get new clothes, which I have recently purchased even more clothes to replace the ones that were just falling off of me. And that's what I want to talk about right now is this concept of what it's like to have to resize your body for clothes. So for example, I had been wearing size large shirts. So we can say a size large torso. And I was wearing by default, as far as let's say workout pants or shorts, I was wearing large and sometimes medium. And th those were my workout clothes from when I started a little over a year ago. Well, what I found was actually I'm, I'm new sizes and they don't necessarily match. That's what I really want to point out. So I have a medium torso and I have size small legs is the way it's the way I'm constructed. And I accept that it. it's not like everyone's torso is going to match the size of the legs to have a medium torso and a medium leg. Now, medium torso, so proportionally, I guess my legs are smaller. If I fit perfectly, I would be maybe taller. I'd be closer to 5'11 instead of 5'9, and then maybe I'd have size medium legs, but I don't. My waist and my legs are size small. So now I know that. And it's interesting just to kind of reverse that thinking, to kind of go back. Back when I was wearing size large shirts, what was that ultimately to do? It's to compensate a few things. For one, my neck. My neck apparently filled out more of, of, of the top part of my shirt because once I started shrinking, once I started downsizing, I would notice that it was just like, how do all my necks get so stretched out on my shirts? Well, it was because there used to be more to fill there. And then also too, where the stomach was. I needed size large to cover up where my stomach was sticking out. Well, now that I'm medium wearing, this is of course a size medium shirt. Now that I'm wearing that, uh, it's all proportionally the same. So the large only compensated really the, the neck and, and the belly, but this is the way a shirt should fit. Now let's say, and I don't necessarily plan for this to happen. Or I don't need this. I don't aspire for it to happen, but let's say over the next couple of years, I, I keep doing my weight training and eventually my arms started getting bigger as far as muscles go. Well, what would happen is then I would start stretching out the arms just by default of, of the muscles. Uh, and that's often what you see with, with, with guys who do weight training is seems that they're wearing tight t-shirts. Well, technically they're not, they're wearing the right size t-shirt. It's just that their muscles are bigger and they fill it out more so than a guy like me. So right now, uh, I am right at 159 pounds is where I'm at. I'm consistently under that 160 now, uh, and I'm happy about that. Ultimately, I still have, I'm going to say at least a solid 10 pounds of fat as far as my goals go. And uh, I'll just go ahead and lift up my shirt to show that that's where my stomach's at. I feel pretty good about, but we still have fat. And I think there's probably 10 more pounds of, of fat before... I'm really reaching my goals and at that point I can stop uh, living in a caloric deficit for the, from day to day and switch over to building body mass by going back closer to 2,000 calories instead of the 1750 I'm at right now. So uh, it's interesting because this is the first time too that I've ever bought like size small workout uh, shorts. So it's funny because like now that I've been working out, uh, oh! I've got, that's the first time I've ever had shape to my butt. I've just always been, it's just been sticks. Just, you couldn't really even distinguish where my butt was. So it's like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. This is uh, very rewarding in the process of not only sticking with my keto uh, diet regimen, but also all that I'm doing my walking two to five day, two to five miles a day, uh, doing pretty good about sticking around 1750 1,750 calories a day uh, and those sort of things. Of course, being at the gym, usually six days a week and focus on different 
uh, styles. I, of course, half the week I'm doing the time under tension where it's, where I basically do half of what I could max, but do it 10 times slowly. And then the other half, I do my max at, at five reps times three. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm very happy about that. I am not seeing fat gain. And again, now that I'm in that 159 range, basically once I can be at the top of the 140s, like 148, I'll probably get rid of that extra fat. And then I can focus on uh, building muscle more so than cutting fat. Because that's really where I'm at. I'm still most mostly focused on uh, cutting the fat. So there you go. There's my own epiphany. Uh, the takeaway from this video is this, that as you successfully start cutting fat and as you start successfully building muscle, what's going to happen is you're going to find your real true default size of uh, what you, what size you really should be wearing, not what size you're wearing to cover up your belly sticking out or, or even for your waist to, because that's really what waist size comes down to. It comes to your stomach expanding the size of your waist. So naturally, my waist size has shrunk. So I'm, I'm solidly th size 31 waist. Makes me wonder though, if I lose another 10 pounds, that's probably gonna be, gonna be, gonna be closer to that size 30 waist, which isn't even one of my goals, honestly. I'm happy with 31, but I've still got 10 more pounds of fat to lose from what I predict. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'll still be in size small uh, as far as pants go because size 31 is kind of actually in between medium and small. So I'll still just solidly be in the small size. So that's what I've learned so far. It's been really interesting confirmation that despite, once you get down to getting to that, and, and you know, I've been saying that I want 18% body fat. For me, honestly, it's just a matter of whatever percent body fat I get to, to where, and it's not so much that this is all muscle, it's that this is going to be a flat stomach completely. There's nothing sticking out right there. I'll be, so whatever that is, if that's 18, if that's 17, if it's 16, but honestly, and I've said it before, I don't aspire to get down to say 10%. I don't aspire to look like an Avenger uh, because ultimately I know that with that comes that much more discipline. Uh, I, I wanna be able to eat fun stuff when I feel like it occasionally. Uh, I don't want to, live in such a restricted way that I can't still live my life. But to be fit for a four-year-old guy, yeah, that's something I, I care about and that's something I can maintain and sustain and be happy doing it. And people around me can still be happy because I can still have fun with, with what I eat as long as it's the exception to the rule and not the day-to-day. -day. So there you go. I'm officially size medium torso, officially size small pants, and I'm not having to cover up for extra fat now. I don't think that I'm going to have to worry about having smaller clothes, like have to get a new wardrobe, other than maybe jeans and pants if I need to go down to a size 30, but that's not a really big deal because at this point I've only really got size 31 pants for two pairs of pants. Because right now I haven't really been wearing pants, I mainly been wearing shorts every day since I'm working from home. Your comments belong right here.